some people's lives are so miserable, so negative, so they're so pessimistic. Everything's going wrong. Now, I'm not talking about if you're on a mission that is God ordained and you're doing kingdom work and you're coming up against uh, prosecution or spiritual attacks. I'm not talking about that. It's a completely different thing. You've got your full armor of God, you're protected, and you're going in there for a purpose to shut down the enemy operation and come out. It's a different purpose. Yeah. I'm talking about if it's just continuous, it's just prolonged, you know, that spine problem, it's just chronic, it's just been going on for years and years. I'm talking about if things are just constantly breaking down around you, the light bulbs, and then the car, and then the cupboard and then the fridge and then the washing machine is just continuous 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 and it's just all you know it's just your whole life that's just how it is i'm talking about when that mind chatter is just always there you know you know jesus says forgive your neighbor love your neighbor but you can't find it in your heart to forgive them you just hate them you secretly hope something bad happens to them yeah i'm talking about when it's a generational thing like a generational curse a generational when you've got cancer running in your family generation after generation I'm talking about when addiction, alcohol addiction or drug addiction is just running in your family generation after generation. Even when it's not running in your family and you've just got this drug addiction, this alcohol addiction. That's what I'm talking about. These are the kind of things that I'm talking about. Know that the devil is operating in your life. Somewhere you have given the devil a foothold. The devil is operating in your life and the Bible tells us the thief, the devil, comes only to kill, steal and destroy. right comes only to kill steal and destroy when the devil comes into your life he comes to kill steal and destroy number one kill it could be kill you your body or cause you to murder somebody else as we saw with cain and abel in the old testament it could be kill through abortion it could be killing someone's dreams it could be killing uh, someone's happiness so kill still he comes to steal your sanity steal your clarity steal your joy steal your peace steal your creativity steal your friends steal your husband steal your wife steal your job right it comes to destroy destroy your home destroy your family destroy your name destroy your reputation Going back to steal, could steal your things. It can steal your money. Some people just make money and they just can't hold on to it. It's always gone. It's always gone. It's always gone. Something is stealing that. It's a spiritual thing. Okay? Things happen first spiritually before they happen physically. So if you're going through these things in your life and they're chronic and you know it's not because you're on a king, you're doing kingdom work, you're on a mission and you're up against trials and prosecutions and you're up against spiritual attacks, that's a totally different thing. I'm not talking about that. But when it's when when that's not the case and these things are just chronic in your life, know that somewhere you have given the devil a foothold. Somewhere you have opened the door and you've given room for the enemy uh, uh, to to uh, come into your life, right? And uh, give me a second. Right, yeah. So you somewhere you're opening the door, and or it could be a door that's a generational thing. It's open through your ancestors, right? And it's just going from generation to generation. None of them were covered by the blood of Jesus. But guess what? It stops here. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. Stop letting the devil lie to you. Right? And Jesus can break that generational stuff. And Jesus said to that woman who had blood for how many years? 12 years, 18 years. Jesus said to a woman, you are loosed from your uh, infirmity. What did he mean by loosed? She was held by the enemy for all those years. And Jesus comes in and says, woman, you are loose from your infirmities. And Jesus went to that guy in the tombs who was uh, self-cutting. And he said to the demon in the man, what is your name? And the demon replied and said, my name is Legion, for we are, we are many. And Jesus come uh, Legion, meaning an army of demons. Legion means an army of soldiers. Uh, yeah, an army of soldiers. So in the spiritual realm, it's an army of demons. 
and just commanded that legion to come out of the man. And all them, I think there were over 2,000 of them that came out of the man. Right? So if you see things that is supernatural, when I mean supernatural, I mean cancer going from generation to generation. That's not normal. Don't think that's normal and don't let science tell you that's normal because it's not. When you see uncontrollable behavior, because, the, uh, where is it? Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to, through 23, it tells us that the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, gentleness, and it says a few more. And then at the end it says, and self-control. So the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, it's all about self-control. So when you see behavior that is not controlled, in other words, you can't control it, it's not the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's demonic, right? So when you see behaviors that are uncontrollable, I can't stop using these drugs. I can't stop getting drunk. I can't stop fornicating. I can't stop doing this, that, or the other. And it shows that there's no self-control. It's a demonic bondage, right? Somewhere the enemy is holding you in bondage, in slavery. When you see that, you're always getting sick. It's not normal to always be getting sick. It's not normal to always be getting sick. When you see that, you're always getting sick. And then you begin to speak it. Oh, I always get, oh, that's normal. I always get sick. Just because it always it always happens, it doesn't mean it's normal. What that means is just your words. You're using your words to agree with the devil. That it's okay for me to have this sickness. It's okay for me to always get sick. No, it's not. It's not okay. Why is it? It's none of these things are okay. Why are they not okay? They're not okay because when Jesus went to the cross 2,000 years ago, he put all that sickness to death. He put that generational curse to death. He put that cancer that runs... From generation to generation, he put it to death. He put all that poverty to death. He put all that lack to death. He put everything that is not of God, he put it to death. And then he rose on the third day, but those things remain dead. Why? Because Jesus has power over those things. Why? Because Jesus has lordship over those things. Why? Because Jesus has sovereign over those things. So when Jesus comes to live in you, the reality of what happened in the cross becomes alive in you. Which means those things have no more power over you. Apart from the power you give to them. Satan, when Satan has you bound, he does not have you bound legally. It's illegally. He's trespassing. He has no right to be in your life and hold you captive anyway. The Bible says, Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. All authority has been given to Jesus Christ. All, not some, not 50%, not 80%, not 90%. All authority has been given to Jesus Christ. 100% authority has been given to Jesus Christ, which means Satan has zero percent authority. He does not have even one percent authority. Satan, when he holds you bound, is illegal. He's trespassing. It's an illegal bondage. I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. Let's assume that you're a husband, you're a man, and you're married to your wife. And on the kitchen table, you have your wallet. Being your wife, she has the right to open your wallet, take 50 euros out and go and buy some food. She has the right. She's your wife. But let's assume now that you leave the kitchen door open and a passing stranger is walking and he sees the door open. He sees the wallet on the table. He comes in quietly and he takes that wallet with your money. Not because he had the right to take it because he was in your house illegally he was trespassing so not because he had the right to take it but because you left the door open so when jesus says all authority has been given to me satan has absolutely no authority over you 
So when he comes into your life, it's not because he has the right to come into your life, but because you leave the door open. He's trespassing. It's an illegal bondage. How does, how does he come in? He comes in through lies. That's it. He comes in through lies. So it could be a generational thing, which again, he came in through lies. But he's in your life now, not because you initially opened that door, but because you ignorantly, naively keep that door open. So even if it's a generational thing and you were not the one who initiated that something, you're the one keeping the door open. Because Jesus Christ says, I have given you, you, power and authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the devil and nothing shall by no means harm you. So if Jesus Christ has given you authority over the devil, why is the devil in your life? If Jesus Christ has given you all power over the devil, why does the devil have power over you? If Jesus Christ says, and nothing shall by no means harm you, why is the devil harming you? Ask yourself these questions. Think about it. Because somewhere you are still believing the lies of the devil over the truth of God. That's it. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It's not just about knowing it. It's about knowing it and then walking it. So for example, I know that I shouldn't leave the kitchen door open because passing strangers can grab my wallet. So you know you shouldn't do that. But are you doing that? Knowing it without doing it does you no good. In a likewise manner, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But knowing it without doing it does you no good. So when the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, it goes without saying you must know the truth by getting into the truth and then you have to start applying that truth. In other words, start closing those kitchen doors, for example. Applying that truth. In other words, walking in the truth of Jesus Christ. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Hallelujah. Let's sit in the presence of God. Hallelujah. presence of God is a peace. It's a silence. It's a stillness. It's a love. It's a forgiveness. It's a gentleness. It's a mercy. It's compassion. It's healing. It's deliverance. self-control it's Jesus sit in that presence daily and hear what thus says the Lord hallelujah my books can be purchased below or any Amazon worldwide worldly life of deception who is God? 
new age to Jesus Christ and I'm currently writing spiritual warfare now if you need healing or deliverance message me on social media Facebook LinkedIn Inst Instagram God bless you